everybody. I'm Tim Seelig, the Artistic Director of the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. As you know, we bought a beautiful Art Deco building between the Mission and the Castro, and we had just launched the National Queer Arts Center when COVID happened. One of the programs that we were going to offer in our building was called Behind the Curtain, where we interviewed and had special guests appearing, and one of those was with our guest today. Well, because it closed down, we were not able to do that presentation, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but instead, we get to interview her on TV, on SFGMC TV. It's Jan Wall. You will know her from, well, she's everywhere. But what you may not know is just a little bit of her background. Vancouver Magazine called her San Francisco's sharp-witted solo answer to Rogers and Ebert. She has been a film critic, an art critic, covered the performing arts and film for a while. I'll let her forever, tell Forever, forever. Maybe forever. Um, mm -hmm. But she started her her sort of current gig at KRON Channel 4 in San Francisco in October of 1990. I think you have an anniversary coming up. Sounds oh, my God. 20, 20 years, <laughs> and lots of radio and lots of columns and lots of things. But I was born and raised in show business. So celluloid runs in my bloodstream. Well, we're going to get to that. Um, but you also probably don't know is that she has won two Emmy Awards. And sure. she's going to tell us of two, not one, but two. And yep. she may tell us about that. I will just say it before we launch into this, that she is the greatest friend. She's the greatest friend to, to the gay community, to the chorus, to San Francisco. What a gift. And what a gift it is today to see your beautiful self with your blue sequins and your, your hat. Now, um, you know, we may as well just start out and, and let you talk to us about what's the deal with the hats. What is it with the hats? Okay, some of you out there know that there was a musical called Gypsy about Gypsy Rose Lee, and there was a song in it that three strippers are trying to show Gypsy how to strip. And uh, there was a song called, "If uh, You Gotta Have a Gimmick, you know, if you're gonna bump it, bump it with the trumpet, and you know, all these other, and you know, you could strip to ballet, you can strip to, to with electric uh, lights. And I thought, hey, a gimmick. And then I thought, hey, what do I love? I always was loved. I came up from a very extravagant mother, a very anti main kind of mother, big surprise. And I always wore, I love hats. I mean, from Ingrid Bergman's in Casablanca at the end of Casablanca to, uh, you know, to now Voyager when she comes down the gangplank in that hat. So I really love hats. So I always loved them when I was a kid. And I just thought this would be something different. Put a little, a concept was really, Tim, to put a little show in showbiz. Right. You know, you do it with the chorus. The chorus does it on stage. We you do. can't just come out there and, you know, this is. <laughs> and also, you mentioned about being an art critic. I am an art critic because cinema, the cinema, and the cinematic arts, you know, and also, of course, Broadway. And you can't get me on any musical, honey. And, and you know, I mean, and, you know, the gay community has my heart. If I'm with the gay community, I truly believe I'm home. Right. Oh, I love that. Well, we, we feel the same way about you. You have been so dear. So tell us about the earliest. I want to know, um, mm -hmm. when, when did you fall in love with film? Right. I was raised in West Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills and Westwood. Everybody around me was in the business, okay? Everybody. My parents, my friend's parents were all on studio lots. I mean, these people have to, work, you know, there were stars everywhere, OK, there were stars all over. We lived on a street in Beverly Hills named Hutton Drive. On one side of us was um, uh, Buddy Epson on the other. And this is way before Beverly Hillbillies. On the other side was uh, Jean Barry, who later played in La Caja Fold, by the way, one of my favorite Broadway musicals ever. And um, anyway, so uh, every, but down the street was Barbara Stanwyck. Up the street was Ray Walston. I mean, uh, you know, my dad got his shirts made what Clark Gable did. Uh, I mean, these people were everywhere. Now, as great as it was off camera, it was even better on camera because both my mom and dad loved movies. 
movies. They were a couple kids from the Midwest, moved out to West LA, started a very successful business. My dad played big band drums for fun. So we always were around musicians and artists and writers. My mother was active even then in the 1950s in the gay, there were gays everywhere. Uh, whether they were, uh, you know, not to be stereotypical, but costume designers, writers, uh, every kind of person you could think of. One of her best friends was a lesbian who was a wonderful artist, uh, fine artist. Uh, it just, that community was everywhere. Uh, music was everywhere. Artists were everywhere. It was wonderful to be raised this way. And I have lots of experience, but on screen, things were even better because my parents loved movies. And when we were little kids, my three sisters and I would sit down in front of that old Packard Bell TV and we would watch, you know, Errol Flynn, Rosalind Russell. Uh, you know, my mother loved the strong women. My father loved the ruthless men. And uh, we were off at the races. Wow. So yeah. one, of the, one of the things that I want to make sure that everybody looks forward to is the presentation that we were planning uh, right. for Dan to do in the building, which right. we will do in the building as soon as we're allowed back in. I'm going to leave the, the title to you, but we mm -hmm. it, it's the best. So, I want to do it so bad. So, it's called Real Fabulous, Gays and Lesbians in Hollywood. And I want to remind people that Elizabeth Taylor said, and she should know, no, uh, without gays and lesbians, there'd be no Hollywood. You know, that's how important I right now, even as we speak, and I'm trying very hard uh, to get a um, Billy Haynes, who was the first out uh, actor who paid for it. But later on, he had a second career that was even better. But he was sort of the Tom Hanks of silent movies anyway. He ought to have a, a star on our Rainbow Walk of Fame because uh, he was really something. But anyway, I digress. This is a really fun look, like the celluloid closet, but right. nothing's as good as the celluloid closet. I mean, Tim, the celluloid closet, please, you know. But, I mean, it's so great. It's my favorite people. Please, if you haven't seen that documentary, you know, read the book, see the documentary, all of that. But anyway, it's all about uh, the history, really, not as much the imagery on screen as the celluloid closet, but more the people who made uh, it possible for gays and lesbians to uh, build Hollywood. Tell me the most tragic story of someone who was in the closet and, and <sighs> felt like they couldn't come. Well, I know there are. Everybody, almost everybody. Does Almost one, everybody. Does one come to mind specifically? Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it's semi-recent. I mean, I could certainly, I love the 20s and 30s and all that, and certainly would show clips from that and all that. You know, but I think of something interesting. I think of Richard Chamberlain versus Tab Hunter, okay? Richard Chamberlain, who I had a terrible crush on when I was about 10, you know, terrible pictures of him all over and all that, because uh, he was in uh, Dr. Kildare at the time on TV, and I just, you know, of course, I found a gay man to have a crush on. Um, <laughs> hello. I remember. <laughs> but he had a terrible, sad, closeted life. This is not what you want for anybody. This is a sad, I mean, I don't have to tell you, Tim, you know, this is a sad way to go through life. On the other hand, you have Tab Hunter. He had half of a horrible life when he was closeted and half of a very good life. So, you know, and Billy Haynes, this guy I'm talking about from the 1920s, he had, ha I mean, he got beaten up and hurt and, and fired from being the number one movie, one of the number one movie stars in the 20s and, and early 30s. But he had this huge talent. He was an interior designer. Uh -oh. And he, uh, very famous. If you look up William Haynes, I mean, he did everybody. So he did the, uh, you know, ambassador uh, houses. And he did, I hate to say it, he did Ronnie and Nancy's place. And uh, if they don't put up his his star, I would think it's because he was such good friends with them. And there's no accounting for taste that way. But the good news is uh, he also was very tight with Joan Crawford and Carol Lombard and all those people. And he did all their houses and he became very famous and very rich. Wow. That was his second life. So that that's William Haynes. There's books about him. There's incredible coffee table uh, looks at him anyway. So that's the kind of thing we'll do. And of course we'll get dishy because I yep. live for scandals and I live for dish. I live for dish. So what I do. <laughs> I, live hey, I live for dish. Wait, my autobiography. I can see it now. Right. Uh, yeah. I live for dish in hats. Right. 
And um, so what brought you north from? Fell in love. Fell in love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And still with him. And we'll have 40 years, um, October 5th. We'll have 40 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Congratulations. I know. So a have, farm boy from Iowa. You'll have 40 years with him and 30 years at KRON. Well, yeah, and, and more than that. I mean, KCBS, too. I've got that not much time at KCBS. I don't know. I think I just try and stay under the radar, you know, because, well, but which is pretty hard when you're wearing a hat, but right. uh, and, and sequins, yeah. <laughs> and you're out of the closet as far yeah. as I'm out, you know? Yes, Jan Wall, <laughs> the force of nature. Uh, mm -hmm. So you came north, and mm -hmm. when did you become a film critic? A, right, a, that's a good not, question. Not yeah. an extra one, but. Right. I was an associate director. I was in the Directors Guild, one of the youngest women ever in 1977. I mean, I was making documentaries. I was directing documentaries. I worked on shows, uh, all kinds of exciting big network shows as a stage manager because I like to be down on the stage. I mean, I did a lot of good work. People returned my calls in L.A., which in L.A. is pretty remarkable. When I met Russ, uh, I didn't even believe in love, really. I mean, I believed in it in the movies, but I, I, I didn't know it could happen in real life. I wow. really didn't. And it's still happening. I yeah. didn't know. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, the, the thing is, you didn't know, and, and you're still learning. And wow. It's Who knew? And we have nothing in common. I mean, his idea of a romantic film is Patton. I mean, this guy is all about... <laughs> it's like military central, you know? <laughs> but... Uh, you know, uh, you get what you get when you fall in love, you know, and it's nice. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's good. Right. And he was in the military and he had many gay friends in the military. Believe me. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. What in your background has made you be such an activist? Politics. I grew up uh, in the 60s. You know, I came of age in the 60s and my mother was a protester. She took us to protests. We went to Woolworths when the sit-ins first started. There's pictures of me in a uh, stroller uh, because she wanted to support. This is in Westwood, in West L.A. Uh, there was a Woolworths and she wanted to support the she organized other women, uh, other housewives and stuff, She even though she wasn't a housewife. But anyway, she uh she uh, wanted to protest the blacks who were doing the sit-ins at the Woolworth counters. Uh, she was an early civil rights activist, and uh, I maintain my activism. And right now, I'm, I'm still an activist. Yes, you, you still are. So arriving in the 80s in, mm -hmm. in San Francisco, um, mm -hmm. it was a rough, very rough decade for... Well, for yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very well, sad. Yeah. And then you came out of that and, and you're on, then you're on TV, um, TV, radio, the whole world took notice. And I'm not, I'm not surprised cause I'm so funny. You know, I'm really kind of funny. I mean, I make people laugh and I don't mean to, if it was something I was trying to do, it wouldn't work. But no. you know, I think funny. Do you remember the movie Arthur with uh, D D Dudley Moore? That, by the way, has one of my favorite lines. I love dialogue in movies. That has one of my favorites. He says to this woman he picks up and takes to a restaurant, he says, you a hooker? I thought I was just doing great with you. <laughs> I don't know why I love that line. Right. Anyway, so um, he says in the movie, he says, he's laughing out of nowhere. And he, somebody says, why are you laughing? And he says, because I think funny. And right. I think funny. Yeah. And I'm so and also I love film. I love film in the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Movies change our lives. I do a talk on movies that change our lives. I would love to do a Zoom with you right here and with your group about where it's interactive and people can like send you messages and it's movies that, that had an impact on their lives. Do you know how many great gay movies there are? Ones that really speak to us. Yeah. Okay, you got here in 1980, and right. the Cadence Chorus had begun in 1978. Right. I got into the... I mean, I started working with you guys pretty early on. I was going to ask if you have any idea when the first time was. Well, I remember the first time when I walked on a stage with all of you, and I thought to myself, I cannot believe I'm on a stage with this many men, and I haven't slept with any of them. No. Well... <laughs> 
I don't know that there was a guarantee of that, but uh, you you assumed that's the way that was. Um, so let hey, me we all have our wild seeds, you know. I mean, right. I'm really happy. I've lived a big life, Tim. Really yeah. happy. But back to the gay men's chorus. The gay men's chorus. When I first saw them, I, you know, it was back. There were other people involved. It wasn't you. It was other people who were also wonderful and fabulous and a terrific Australian woman and a, a wonderful uh, Teddy, a man named Teddy, and Teddy. these wonderful people who were involved. And they, you know, they grabbed onto me the way I grabbed onto them. You know, we have to grab onto each other. Otherwise, we're sinking. Right. We've got this. Remember, we've got a, a, a maniac who's trying to sink us. So we have to hang on to each other, you know? Sure so anyway, so I got involved with them. Oh, what was that marvelous Australian woman? I loved Kathleen. her. Kathleen. Yeah, Kathleen. And so um, anyway, so I got all involved. I did a bunch of stuff. And I, I just, when I hear the gay men's chorus, my heart just... Oh, thank it you. It beats so fast and so loud. And well, I came here in um, ninety uh, in twenty ten to guest conduct, and they said, um, "You here? You're gonna you're gonna guest conduct a show about the '60s, and um, one of the MCs is gonna be Jan Wall." And I'm from Texas. <laughs> of hats. I only know cowboy hats. And right. how she's fabulous. You're going to love her. And, and she grew up in the, in the sixties as I did, and we'll share some memories. And I will never forget you and that evening and how much fun it was and how gregarious and how an audience of 2,500 people were right in the palm of your hand. So um, I remember, was, I remember I, thinking, I'm so happy they found him. Yeah, thank you. It was you and Joan I mean, Baez on that. The two of you were the guest stars, and it was amazing. Then I got this job, and I came back, and my first month here, um, this is one of my favorite anecdotes of all times, my very first month here, they said, Jan Wall wants to have you and some of the the guys and say, welcome to the new artistic director and have some guys just right. kind of be there. And so I'm like, okay. And so we went to the studio. It's a Saturday morning. I had maybe 16 guys in tails all dressed up and you were holding court. And we went to, to a commercial, literally probably a one-minute <laughs> commercial. And we're all sitting there and you're like, you have to sing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I just started. We don't, we don't know. We did not know we we're going to sing. Live TV, baby. And you, and you did. You were like, we're going to sing. And I turned around to the guys. And I was like, guys, uh, what, do you, what do you know? And they're like, we can sing San Francisco, the, the standard San Francisco. And you're like, great, that's perfect. And I'm like, but what key are you going to sing it in? I know nothing. And literally, <laughs> the stage manager is like, uh, four, three, <laughs> came back on. And I have never let these guys forget this because the, she's like, and now the San Francisco Gaming's Chorus is going to sing for us. And somebody gave a pitch. Hmm, and they did this. San Francisco, open your golden gate. Blah, 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 blah. They didn't know the words. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes, our theme song, they said. And it was like, nah, 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 nah. I've never, for, I will never forget it. Oh, Lord never have mercy. But you know, Tim, it doesn't matter. You got the publicity. I fought very yeah. hard for the gay community to get publicity. I mean, they didn't say, oh, Jan, let's have some gay people on. I had to fight like hell. I fought for Donna Sachet. I fought for I fought for people to get on. I did it didn't just happen. Right. And I had to put my ass out there, if you don't mind me saying the A word. I, I really had to do that. I'm not blowing my own horn, but don't think the people at the top where I were in my, my world, they don't give a crap. Right. Yeah. They for don't sure. give a crap. And well, I had to prove to them that we'll get eyeballs on the screen if we get some gay people in here. We represent you know, and uh, God, it just makes me so mad how hard I had to fight for that. Yeah. But uh, the well, good news finish. is Hold it's on. now the big thing, you know. Hold on. I'm going to finish because I have pictures of this. We have pictures. So we're all what? still sitting here and you're talking to me. I don't have a microphone. And there, and someone said, Jan, he doesn't have a microphone. And you said, here, use mine and pulled my head over into your bosom. Yeah, that was a big moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. 
called yeah Mickey's. yeah it was I, we have pictures of me with my head. That's right so funny. Right here. I love that. I'll, I'll send you the pictures. Would you? Of course. I like to blow it up and put it next to uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Salvador Dali. I bet your husband will be very jealous. Uh, believe yeah. me, after 40 years, he wouldn't even notice. All right. Okay, I want to just mention that uh, Gay Course Deep South was one of my first top 10 movies this year. I mean, it was right up there because I love that film and I feel good that I was able to get, you know, maybe a few more people to see it than would have seen it otherwise. So it's very important. In fact, um, the interview that you and I did about the, yeah. about the film was... I'm crying because it's, it's just meaningful to me. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just, um, you were so insightful about the movie and it was really... Uh, um, it was a real moment. So it, it is supposed to be airing on television in October. Good, good. And I'll promote it again because I'm on the air a bunch. So I'll promote it again mm -hmm. until they throw me off, till they figure out I'm still on the air. So. I'm so radical. You know, I'm considered so radical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. I don't know what that's about. Well, I just want to, can I, do we have time for me to say one quick course. thing? Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Um, one of the things that happened to me is I got a lot of hate mail when I started supporting the gay community. Severe, dangerous hate mail. And I made a decision. I mean, some I had to actually turn over to the FBI. I mean, it was bad, okay? So I made a decision to go to a big gay man's course event at, right after I'd been threatened pretty severely. And a, main, a man named Lenny Broberg, I'll never forget, and some others came and said, we will guard you. And they guarded me. Wow. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, people, people now don't have any idea that those kinds of things were reality for people like you. Um, who would, who would step and, out. and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Wow. And I felt safe not just because Lenny and all those wonderful people, but because I'm with you, you know, and I felt safe. Well, I, you know, it's, you know, we lay down our lives for each other. Right. Well, absolutely. When I, when I think about uh, the perfect, the perfect spokesmodel for our community, how, how could we get any better than a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful white lady from Marin with hats <laughs> who is standing up for our community like you've done for these, well, your whole life. Um, That's right. I love My mother would have done it too. You know, right. I come I out of that the, world. The stories about you growing up around gays and lesbians in the yep. film industry in yep. LA, and then your mom took you to Woolworths and made you an activist in a street, right. for God's sake. Uh, and, um, and all that and your experience has led to this beautiful, beautiful woman that sits here beside me on this Zoom. Who thank is, you, Tim. Uh, oh, there are no adjectives to uh, to describe the... But what about what you're doing? It's pretty wonderful and that we're going to have this building and, you know, it's just so great. I mean, when you put us all together, it's just combustible. It's wonderful. We are so honored that you spent this mm -hmm. time with us today. And we will see you many... Let's do it again. Let's do the thing about movies that changed our lives or movies wanna... that helped us come out. You know, yes. a lot of people came out to movies, you know? Uh, yes, uh, people probably came out in the middle of movies. No. Yes, and musicals. Don't forget, like right here, I was just watching Funny Girl. Hello, here's Funny Girl. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Here's Pride. We were talking about Pride, this wonderful no, no, movie. There's nothing about Pride. About okay, this. this is a movie that not enough people have seen and that I would, uh, let's see if you can get a good look at it. I would definitely... Uh, talk about this in part of my, I mean, there's so many movies about pride, about having pride, about looking for pride. This one is about what happened. It's a true story when a group of British uh, gays and lesbians, part of the movement, uh, decided to become 
in solidarity with miners in England who were striking yeah. during the uh, horrible Thatcher decade. Remarkable. And uh, it's just a remarkable film. And the other part that we didn't, that was not on this because we were doing it before we started was <laughs> Mitch Gali, our associate artistic director, who is in charge of rhythm, which is reaching youth through music. He and mm -hmm. Jan hooked up because Jan has a whole speech, not a speech, a whole but, uh, yeah on the uh -huh. movies that kids should watch. That's and, right. Yeah, we're right. going to get together with you. And well, you know, through it all, Tim, through it all, through the talk I'm going to give on gays and lesbians and film, da, 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 music's a part of it. You know, one of the reasons I gravitated immediately to the gay men's course, immediately, is because I come out of the world of music. Right. And I come out of the world of musicals. And, uh, you know, like this morning, I was listening to Jazz Ladies. This is a new CD I just got of of uh, Ella Fitzgerald and these yeah. other wonderful jazz ladies, Sarah Vaughn, Carmen McRae. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I listen to. And then I love movies that have actual gay actors in them. And this is The Man Who Came to Dinner, which is this really funny, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a comedy, high comedy, uh, with a gay actor named Monty Woolley, who comes to dinner and won't leave. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we need to come uh, do a whole Zoom of your- A whole uh, deal, of, yeah. Of your CD collection. Oh, oh my God, it's huge. It's humongous. What have I got here? Wait. I mean, it just, it piles. Oh, for my lesbian girlfriends listening yeah. right now. Look at, look what I have. Once I had a secret love. This oh. is Calamity Jane. Doris yeah. Day herself told me closest to her real self. Mm. Oh my gosh. Wow. I know, right? Jan, you are amazing. Oh yeah. my goodness. And you get younger every year. Every year. Every it's year. amazing. It's a, it's a miracle. Uh, it is a miracle. Thank you so much for being here. We Can we do Fiddler on the Roof? Wonders of wonders, miracle of miracles. I know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you are that. Love you so much. Thank <laughs> I you. I love you, Tim. Thank you and everybody out there. Thank love you. you.